It's a documentary about nature. And as you can see here, we're going to let you know everything you need to know about the Oakland Nature Preserve. So enjoy. Oakland Nature Preserve is an established nature park where visitors can walk, observe animals, and learn about the greatness of the outdoors. Lake Apopka is the third largest lake in Florida. It is located 15 miles away from the town of Orlando. It borders Orange and Lake County and it flows into the St. Johns River. The lake in itself is very, very large. It's very important to this area. It's, it's, uh, it's 30,000 acres in size. At one point in time, it used to be one of Central Florida's top attractions. So it was once the second largest lake in the state of Florida and it was renowned bass fishing from all over the world we used to have 29 fish camps around this lake that would rent boats and sell bathe, rent cabins and that sort of thing. The old hotel in downtown Winter Garden was built to house fishermen who came here. And we had pictures of these string of bass that people would catch out there and it's just phenomenal. But as more and more human interactions were made, the lake itself lost value in its natural and recreational feel. There's many, many problems evolved We have. The first thing that happened probably was 1898 when they opened a canal from Lake Apopka to Lake Beauclair to use it for navigation. And then a number of other things occurred. Although many tragedies passed through the water, Lake Apopka would not yet see its biggest foe. But the biggest single thing the mud party. on the marshes on the, the North Shore of Lake Apopka. During World War II, there was a need to feed Americans on duty and Americans at home. They considered bringing crops from the Midwest down to Floridians, but there was another way. And uh, they realized that by utilizing what they call muck farming, that they could get several crops a year instead of the one crop that came out of the Midwest. Here in Florida, because of the weather and because of the richness of the soil. We had a crash from a healthy lake that had a lot of game fish to a polluted lake that had no game fish. years later, Jim Thomas and colleagues from the West Orange community organized and became FOLA, the Friends of Lake Apopka. Nowadays, Lake Apopka is pushed forward by FOLA to its original state and protected from industrial projects. Well, the history of the Oakland Nature Preserve comes from the Friends of Lake Apopka. Working with Friends of Lake Apopka, we were very active in the restoration process of Lake Apopka. Once we saw the restoration was going to start becoming a realistic thing, we knew that we had to keep the public at large involved. With the soon-to-be site of the preserve being a citrus grove, and later a slash pine farm, these forerunners of the preserve decided to start at the Amon Pavilion. So if you wanted to hike, or do anything, that was your entrance. That was the only entrance we had until the parking lot was developed in 2005. I am a member of the Florida Native Plant Society and we were called to help with the restoration because we know our native plants, we know what is, doesn't belong here and what does belong here. So I just started coming back and providing maintenance and then got uh, really interested in, in helping with the rest, the total restoration of this upland portion of the preserve. Well, I used to, I used to be a scout master, and so I enjoyed working with scouts. And my wife was already helping here at the preserve, and so when they needed someone to take on that project, it was it was fun. Oi, you see that? The lizard there in the jungle, or preserve? Crikey, he's as green as a neon croc.
Character Preserve, there's all kinds of wildlife. Like these turtles here, there's also armadillo, raccoon, rabbit, and if you're lucky, you'll even see a coyote or maybe a bobcat. Bigger animals like bobcats and coyotes are more likely to be seen in the upland trails. At the preserve, there is such a wide variety of animals, from deadliest to liveliest, and from smallest to biggerest, or biggest. This fish I have on my desk is called an armored catfish. And he is in Lake Apopka. He's in a lot of the streams around here. And he is, uh, he looks like something straight out of the dinosaur age. But uh, and we, um, we were able to get him and really intact. I, I don't know if they found him in the mud or, or where, but uh, he's quite a treasure. I think he's cool. But there are army catfish in the lakes here in the state of Florida. And for all the info you could ever need on these wonderful creatures, is in the education center, especially for your favorites. Hmm. That's a good question. I love animals in general. Like, I like more marine animals, I guess, because I want to be a marine biologist when I grow up. But I just love all types of animals: flying animals, ground animals, even mean animals. You know, you just got to be nice to them. I guess just stay out their face, and they'll stay out of your face. Don't really have a favorite one though. I have to say, I don't know, today. Normally I, I more like wolves and dogs and all that, but there's a uh, there's a greater siren they have here. It's a um, primitive salamander. It's a I gotta say that that's becoming one of my favorites because it's pretty cool. It looks like an eel, but it's got it's got arms in the front. <laughs> yeah, and even little <laughs> legs and arms. And it's something that's pretty cool. My favorite turtles. I like turtles. I think they're really cool, and I always liked turtles. But before I started working here and working with them, I didn't appreciate them. Jackie Rowley is your lady for plants. She is so plant crazy that we had to get up at 6 in the morning just so we could plant ourselves right across from her. Understanding our Florida native plants is very difficult. There is nothing taught in our local schools about Florida environment and what it means to be a sand hill. What they used to have is the same sandy soil here. And they'd go down to the lake or river beside it Dig up the muck, thatch together your palmettos, make them into buckets and carry the muck up to the garden. They would start with three sisters with the corn. This is the first sister is the support. She will grow up and we want to get her high enough so that the rest of the plants that are put in there will grow onto her. Is the corn. I guess it's been it takes about three weeks. About a week ago. As you can see and hear. Pioneer plants are a crucial part of the ecosystem here at the Nature that's, Preserve. That's the first, that it's called the Three Sisters, and all three of them go together. We'd like to start early in the morning. It gets hot in Florida very quickly in the summertime, so we like to come out early. It's hard work. Removing invasives is the biggest part. We have to prepare an area before we can bring our natives in. The alien, the invasive alien plants like Johnson grass or natal grass or various others dominate and they outcompete our natives. So the first thing we have to do is get rid of the invasive. Shane Overstreet is a student currently attending Rollins College and on his way for a degree that will benefit the nature around him. The things I'm pulling up, they're not even, they're native, they're cool, like they're good guys, they feed stuff. But um, we're, we're keeping the kind of more pioneer-like look of this. And I'm not pulling these out because you really need like a, one of those little uh, mini shovels, what do you call them? Yeah, like a trowel. Trowel, yeah, thanks. I know how to use it, I don't know what it's called. And so you need to kind of dig real deep in here because these things have this like little like acorn, like nut thing. Yeah. And if you don't pull that up, this thing will come right back. And it, like, so I'm skipping those and I'm just trying to hit some of the bigger roots. I really like to show the kids, uh, I don't remember the full name, but it's uh, mimosa and it kind of looks like a, it's a ground cover. Um, you can touch the leaves, you can kind of run your finger down the leaf and it closes up, the leaf closes up as like a defense mechanism kind of, that it's getting walked on. And you can use the, uh, the plant uh, as kind of a teaching tool for kids, I feel, uh, because of the sense of feel. What we don't understand, we will never save. We have to educate. 
multiple generations to appreciate the real Florida landscape and why it is so important to biodiversity and our own continued existence. Don Hickman, the trail master, is the reason why these trails look so nice. He puts his heart, soul, and feet all over this place. Here in the preserve, there is a two mile long boardwalk, seven walking trails, and a little sign that'll tell you what's what. Well, my name is Don Hickman, and one is I try to take care of the trails. And we have about five, uh, a little over five miles of, of, of walking trails here. And they're all marked with uh, uh, marking uh, stakes so you can know which trail you are. I keep those painted so that the, you, you don't get lost. And uh, uh, if the trails need to be mowed, I make sure that uh, they uh, come, somebody comes in and mows them. Uh, if a tree falls down across a trail, I get my chainsaw and try to clean it up, but it's too big a job that I'll get the, the, the town guys to come up and get a hand. The thing that I feel the best about is when I can go on the trail and it looks right. It, it, you know, it's, it's mowed, the, 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 the trail markers are, are bright so you don't have to One of the structures on this land, the flagpole, was actually an Eagle Scouts project done not too long ago. Trail, there's the trails themselves, there's the signage of the trails. There's the, the different coloring markings of the trails. Um, there's when you go out on the boardwalk itself, uh, some of the enhancements to the end of the boardwalk. Uh, those are a few. Those are a few of them. Scouts, do you want to know a place to take care of your Eagle Scout project? Oakland Nature Preserve is that place. You want to know what else? Charlie Joyner is the dude who will help you out. The preserve is a great place to get stuff done, whether it be Eagle Scout projects, volunteer hours, or relaxation of the mind. Okay, let's make this a good one. Yep, we got a chance. Let's go. Three, two. I, Bryce Howard, and I, Danny Archula, hope you have enjoyed this documentary, and furthermore, learned something from a natural choice for a good time. Okay, for anyone interested in coming to the Oakland Nature Preserve, I would, I would encourage you to give yourself enough time to really enjoy the place, to just do good for a planet, you know, like, because there's a lot of things in our world nowadays that are really messed up, and there's really few things that you can do to help it out, but... Just come out and have a good time. Um, really, uh, spend some time. Uh, don't, don't just try to come out for maybe like an hour or two. Try to... Come to the preserve. We have a wonderful museum. We have wonderful education programs. We're continually enhancing not only the trails, the signage, the boardwalk. But also experience the upland trails. Visit the museum and the classroom, bring a book, sit on the Serenity Porch. Have an enjoyable day, uh, walk at the trails, uh, there's plenty to do. Anybody that likes nature would, would enjoy it from here. You know what, you, everyone spends so much money a year on a Y membership. You can come out here and work out and go on these beautiful trails. Yeah, it's great. It's all free. Free. And you can help the, help the environment and the community for free. Seven days a week, daylight till dark. you understand and uh, what we're trying to do here and get a real feel, feel. Getting familiar with all the things we're doing, there is a job for everyone here. I think that you should take it no matter what.